Welcome to Stata tutorial number two. Uh, last time on the YouTube videos, the characters were very small and hard to read on the YouTube video. So I've made them bigger. I'm just going to show you on the Mac how that's done. On the PC, I'm sure it's similar. You can just go into Preferences, General Preferences. And when the computer wakes up, it'll show you. And you can choose for the browser, the results window. You can choose the, the font size for each of these for the data editor. Uh, for the command window and so I've set them to 18 so they're bigger and one thing we should also do is set the preferences for the do file editor because we want to be able to see clearly on the YouTube video what that looks like and so I will save that I'm using state of 12 again uh, let's just get right into it last time I forgot to tell you how to get help on the commands how to find out the syntax of the commands, how they're used, and some examples. You can do that by typing from the command line help, sum for summarize, and we can click there because uh, there's another sum command that's a function that's separate. So we use summarize and varless. You can summarize many variables and separate them by space, and you can use conditions like if the variable is greater than this or if it's greater than less than that or if the observation number or in you can apply weights and you can use options. Last time we used the option of D, detail, so I'll let you look through that and figure that out. We can also do help tab or tabulate. We used a one-way tabulation last time, so we'll click on that. And again, uh, var name means it's just one variable. Again, there's a, it gives you the syntax of how to use the command, and we looked at how to use the command last time. Another way to get help is Google. So. If you do stata help sum, it'll take you stata.com, uh, the stata help resource. And if you click on that, you'll see the same information, again with hyperlinks. Uh, the same information. It'll give you these options. You click on one way or two way, whichever one you want to get the help on. And uh, you can get the syntax, the options, and examples of, way at the bottom, there are examples on how to, do, how to use it. Another good thing to look for is stata graphs. State is very powerful uh, regarding graphs. It can generate a whole, different, whole bunch of different types. If you click on that link, here's what you get. A whole bunch of really fancy graphs. And if you want to know how to create an in, any of these individual graphs, you just click on it. And you can get the code and the example here. And you can put this in a do file, and we'll look at do files today, and you can recreate this. And then you can use it also as a template for your own data sets to create your own graphs. Okay, so now let's get into do files. So, to open a do file, you can click the do file editor. Again, I'm working on the Mac, but uh, all this stuff is applicable to the PC, and I'll switch to a PC once mine arrives. So, what I like to start every do file off with is clear. Clear the data sets that are in memory. Set, now let's allocate memory. Let's set mem uh, 200 megs. Now you can set it higher if you want. For our purposes, 200 megs would be plenty. If you have a panel data set or any kind of household survey data set, any data set that has a large number of observations, you're going to want to increase that. You can choose your delimiter if you want to. Right now, the, the, the signal to stata for the end of line is carriage return enter, but if you want that signal for the end of line to be something different, you could do this so that uh, it knows the end of a line occurs when it sees a semicolon. That allows you to write your commands over multiple lines, but we're not going to do that for now because our commands will be simple for now. And what else do we want to put? Um, I would like to define a global variable. Now, last time we looked at local macros, this is going to be a global macro. And tutorial directory and it is going to be the directory in which all our stuff is going to be. So, and to find that, uh, let's go back to Stata, present working directory, cd all files, Stata tutorials, did I make it plural? Yes, so we'll just define that as this. And I like to, I like to define it as a global variable at the top of the file so that if someone, if you're working in Teams and you want to share your code with other people, they just have to change this one line when referring to files, when referring to data files, log files, uh, any kind of files that you outsheet, that you save. Um, that if you put this line in many places in your code then some, and someone wants to run your code, then they have to change that line. Whereas if you just define it as this, then 
they only have to change the one line and they can just refer to the directory uh, as follows. They can just do cd backtick, double quote, and you refer to a global variable with dollar sign, like proceeding with a dollar sign, double quote, apostrophe, and that will set us up nicely. So we're going to cd into that directory and let's start by using the um, the auto data set. So sysuse auto clear. We don't have to use clear because we've already cleared. There's no data set in memory. But it's just a good habit to get into and it doesn't hurt. So let's explore the tab command a bit first. Well first, <laughs> before we do that, I'm going to save this in what will I call it? Tutorial And what else should I do? Well, let's log. Let's log the data here. Log using whenever you specify a name, specify a file to save to or to load from. Usually, you proceed with the word using. Uh, so let's, log, let's put that into the tutorial directory. So we're going to refer to all our directories. This global macro. Oh, maybe I should put a Y here. Tutorial directory. And then we'll give it a name, uh, tutorial2.log. You know, some people like to put their files in different subdirectories, but since this is simple, I'm going to just leave it like that. Now, if you run this file, you know, you have to close it, log, close, at some point. Otherwise, um, you know, if you run this file multiple times without closing it, you will run into an error. Stata will give you an error. So what we're going to do is cap, log, close. Cap is for capture. So if uh, there was an error in this program, it didn't run to completion, and this last line, log closed, didn't get executed, then the log file will still be open. What this does is it closes the log file, and capture captures the error. So that if the log file was already closed, then this might generate an error. Don't have a fit. Don't uh, stop the execution. Just proceed, and uh, everything will be OK. So let's run this. And to run this, go view, do file, and execute do. It's also shift command D. It defined its global tutorial directory and we can see that this is where it put us when we cd'd into it. CD'd into it. it uh, closed the log file and didn't generate an error since the log file was already closed. Now it's logging using the log file for us to use later. And what I will do here is uh, show you what that is. Okay, so it saved it into a special format called log, but actually, let's not do that. Let's put two options. T, it'll save as a text file, and if the file already exists, which it now does, it'll replace it. Okay? So let's run that do file again and see what happened. It ran. And, well, let's open it up using a uh, record of your output. Usually when I do work and deliver the, the results, I... Am, I give uh, I give the log file the do file, both of them, and uh, so that people can see how it ran. And this is what your log file looks like. It shows we use sys use auto and log close, and that's it for now. So let's get back to writing the do file. Now, just from the command line, uh, let's let's create another categorical variable. I want to do cross tabs. So the cat use a uh, I'm going to use the tabulate with two variables and use tab command with categorical variables, so I'm going to create another categorical variable, and I'm going to base it on miles per gallon. So let's take a look at miles per gallon. Let's do a histogram of it. Below 20 miles uh, per gallon, medium miles, 20 to 30, and I'm just making up these divisions, and let's say high mileage, uh, good mileage vehicles are above 30 miles per gallon. So I'm going to create a categorical variable, and let's do that in the do file. So we have a record of our commands in we can look at things and make sense of them. So let's do this. Let's generate a new variable called miles per gallon categorical. And we'll, we have to get a variable. We have to get, give this, this variable, this vector, this column vector values to begin with. Let's give it all missing values. Now, let's uh, label this as uh, mpg categorical. Categorical. Yeah. And 
let's start uh, classifying this. So let's do this. Replace mpg cat. Let's say it's zero if the mpg is less than 20 miles per gallon. And let's say zero is low. Let's say one is medium. And if it's greater than or equal to 20, and if you want to say or, you do the pipe. But and use the ampersand. And it's less than 30 miles per gallon. Oh, and what is MPG is? And replace, well, let's do, let's do this. Replace MPG cat is two, we'll say two is high miles per gallon. And we'll say if MPG is greater than or equal to 30, but, and, and but, <laughs> MPG is not equal to a missing value. A missing value is treated as a value that's very, very high, that's infinite. So if we didn't leave this out and there are missing values, those uh, observations for which there are missing values for MPG variable will be classified as high mileage. But we don't want that. Now with this, if there are any missing values in MPG, there are not. But if there were any, they would be left as missing values for the categorical variable. Value, we'll call it MPG cat label. We didn't have to put this here. We could have just called it MPG underscore cat. But let's put the label there so it reminds us that it's a label. So zero is going to be, we're going to classify zero as low mileage, one as medium mileage, values, so apply these label values to the variable mpg cat, and the, the name of the label value definition is mpg cat label. Okay, so let's execute that. Oh, ah, what did I do? Label, do, 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 label var. Ah, forgot to put that in there. Okay. And let's see. So it executed everything. It used the auto data set, generated the new variable. It labeled it correctly so that uh, we can see their new MPG cat variable is here. It's a category name. And we can see that there are 35 cars in the data set got classified as low mileage, 32 got as medium, and now let's just do D. We can see that uh, our new variable here, here's our new variable label, and there's the valuable value label name that we defined and applied. Okay, so let's tab, let's do a tab of the MPG categorizations. Okay, so here we have, this is what we defined, low, medium, and high. And as, again, we saw when we, when we looked at the replacements up here of how many values were changed, 35, 32, and 7. The 35 vehicles in data set are low mileage, 32 have medium MPG, and 7 have high MPG. And these are the percentages. Now let's do a cross tab, like Oracle variable there. So foreign and MPG cap. And so of the 35, 30 are domestic. Of the 35 low mileage, 30 domestic, 5 are foreign. Of the 32 medium, 20 are domestic. 12 are foreign. And of 7 high mileage, 2 are domestic and 5 are foreign. It's useful to get uh, frequencies. So actually, I'm going to put an option here missing. If there are any missing values, it would it would account for, for this. But there are no missing values among these two categorical variables, so it doesn't, that doesn't apply here. But I'm going to like, I like to have that option there. Uh, now, let's take a look at percentages. With the call, the column option, it allows you to get the percentages by column. So of the low mileage vehicles, 85.71% are domestic and 14.29% are foreign. Okay, and all the columns add up to 100%. Of the high mileage vehicles, 28.57% are domestic, 71.43% are foreign. Now, those are columns. Let's see about the rows. Uh, let's replace column with R. So here the rows add up to 100%. So the, of all the domestic vehicles, 57.69% are low mileage, 38.46% are medium mileage, 385 are high mileage, and corresponding, et cetera, for the foreign. Now, you can show both. And here's the key. Here's the frequency, which is the number of occurrences. Row percentages are the second entry. And they all add up to 100. And column percentages uh, are the third one, and they add up to 100 in the columns. Okay, and uh, let's look at the return values that we get. One thing I don't like about the tab command is that it doesn't show the return out that you could use, and you would specify the variables, and you already have it 
uh, installed, so I don't need to execute that command. So that's it for cross tabs. And I'm just going to clear this data set, and I just want to show you something about weights using statistical weights. So let's, um, let's generate some new variables. I'm going to generate um, a new variable called ID. I'm just going to make an entirely new data set. Okay. And we're going to talk about Martians versus Venetians. So alien origin equals dot generate uh, w for I'm going to call w for statistical weight. Make it missing values, and then some variable of interest. I'm going to generate height equals dot edit, and I'm just going to put some values here. ID just to uniquely identify the observations. Alien 0 are the Martians and 1s are the Venetians and we'll say the Martians will count twice as much as the Venetians and we'll say this is 0 0.8 and 1 and we'll call this 1.2 and 1.4 for the height and we'll close that and you can see the commands that are equivalent in, to entering the, those the, the data into the data editor. Here we have ID alien W for the statistical weight, not how heavy the alien is, but the NH and height in meters or whatever. So let's summarize height. So the average height is 1.1 meters, which makes sense given the data that we entered. Let's do it by alien and get this um, the average height for the Martians and the Venetians. So we'll do it by sort. Height of the Martians is 0 0.9, average height of the Venetians is 1.3 makes sense because it's 0.81 and then there's 1.2 and 4 and they average out as that. And then the average of 0.9 and 1.3 is 1.1. Now suppose we want to apply weights. Let's summarize uh, the height and say the weight is, now I'm just going to use AW for analytical weight. There are frequency weights, there are P weights. We're not going to touch those. We're just going to use weight in the traditional sense that you learn weights in your statistics class in high school. So what this did is it weighted the it weighted the observations based on this. So the, the Martians count twice as much as the Venetians. And if we were to do that calculation, well, if we were to do that calculation manually, it'd be 2 times 0 0.8, 2 times 1, uh, 2, 10, 2 times 0 0.8 plus 2 times 1 plus 1.2 plus 1.4, all divided by 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1. And we can do that manually. So 2 times 0 0.8 plus 2 times 0, 1.0 plus 1.2 plus 1.4 divided by 2, yeah, 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. Voila. And it's the same as we expect. And so that's how we apply weights. You most A lot of commands accommodate weights. And you just you know enter the command and then the var, var list. And then you would do aw if you're using analytical weights. It was weight. Now, this assumes that you actually have the weight variable, and household survey data usually comes with it, and you can calculate it based on the population census um, and the number of households surveyed and the household size. And uh, it's very good to have. It's actually essential to have if you want to have accurate results. So if you have the weight variable... Okay, so I think that's it for now. Here is our very simple do file. We've done logs and we learn how to make a do file and learn how to execute it. And next time, uh, I don't know what we'll do next time, but we'll see.